Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and I am super, super, super pumped today because I got an exclusive hands-on first thanks to the amazing people at Filmic Pro to test out ProRes on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. By the way, sorry if the audio is very loud ton of construction here in the city. My contact over there basically messaged me yesterday while I was literally arriving at the Seattle Space Needle and was like, hey, I have something you may be interested in. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, our engineers found the API or whatever the coding for ProRes. And so he shot me over a test flight link and I've been playing it with it for the past 24 hours and I want to show you a ton of sample footage that I've shot with it and share my thoughts on how it compares to shooting in the regular HEVC H265 codec that we've all been playing around with for the past handful of years. Now obviously if you clicked on this video you pretty much already know what ProRes is. It's basically just the professional codec that's made by Apple that's already in a bunch of different types of professional cameras. Everything from Ari Alexas to Blackmagic cameras and other external recorders. Now the reason that this is a big deal is because the HEVC efficient codecs that we've all been seeing are great. Again, they're really efficient, so they don't take up a ton of space on your device, but they still produce a really good image, especially one when you're viewing it back on the phone itself. But the reason to have something like ProRes is to have a lot higher bit rates, which is gonna give you more detailed of an image, which is going to make it match better with bigger cameras like mirrorless cameras, potentially cinema cameras. I don't know if I'm gonna go that far just yet. Now also, I don't wanna waste a lot of people's time here watching this video. So if you can't tell the difference or you don't care about the difference between this clip and this clip, then you may not care for this feature at all because in, to my eyes, there is a huge difference. Now, I don't know what the YouTube compression is gonna do to this, so if this video gets like, I don't know, 500 likes, I'll release a bunch of this sample footage for download in the description or in the top pinned comment like I've done in the past so you can check out the raw files themselves. But if it doesn't look that different after YouTube compression, let me tell you, there is a huge amount of detail difference here. What I'm noticing is a lot less noise in like those lower light situations. It's definitely dealing with noise better. The image is overall just much cleaner, much sharper, but again, not that like disgusting post-processing sharpness that a lot of like what I always complain Android devices do that just make it extra sharp. You can tell they just take the sharpness slider and just max it out. This is just like it is capturing the detail that the hardware of these lenses is capable of doing. Now with that being said, it is definitely not all fun and games because there definitely still are some cons to it. Yesterday I shot a little over 150 clips, each of them probably averaging anywhere from 10 to maybe 20 seconds or so. And I had files as big as two and a half gigs. And so all of you who were laughing at my one terabyte iPhone, uh, yeah, I pretty much I shot 160, 170 gigs for the footage just from my phone, which is pretty similar to B-RAW files on my Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro that I shoot for a YouTube video. So I can understand a little bit more why if you don't buy anything higher than the 256 or up storage capacity, why they limit ProRes to 1080p because the 4K is just very, very storage hungry. And by the way, you can only shoot up to 4K 30. Filmic doesn't know if you'll later be able to do 4K 60 if that's just a current limitation. The other downside for now is their cinematographer kit, which includes the Log V3, which is really, really solid as I've shown off before. Also isn't working right now. They said they may be able to do it in a future update, but for now they just want to get ProRes out there, but it is currently shipping in a standard uh, picture profile. So once you've actually recorded everything now of course is the time of transferring that footage I don't really know anyone who edits uh, the footage from their phone they at least do it on an iPad or a computer and so you really have two ways to transfer the footage as of now and that's going to be wirelessly through something like airdrop or saving it to the cloud or hardwire is going to be the lightning to USB now, airdrop I had zero luck with just because I'm on hotel Wi-Fi and so the transfers were just too slow and so I wanted something a little bit more reliable so I went hardwired 
and it was pretty slow. Obviously, as we all know, Lightning is basically USB 2.0 and this really would have been perfect time for Apple to go USB Type-C with at least USB 3.0, 3.1 type speeds. I think this is going to keep people from using the ProRes feature because it is such a pain to transfer the footage. It took, I'd say about an hour, maybe hour and a half to transfer that 160 gigs. Um, and I definitely recommend using the built-in image capture app from the Mac. That definitely was faster and more reliable. The reason I like using the image capture app more than using the Photos app is because the Photos app, if something fails, it kind of cancels out the entire transfer, whereas image capture basically does it one clip at a time. And so even if you have to cancel it, your phone needs to unplug or whatever the case may be, you at least save all of the clips that it's already imported um, and you can use those. And once I got the footage actually transferred to the computer, everything from that point on was a breeze. Max handled ProRes extremely well. And so editing it inside of DaVinci was, you know, a pleasure just like any other uh, footage in ProRes from another camera. And it is still 10 bit. So even doing some color grading, applying different LUTs, it's gonna give a very pleasing look. And truly this is the first time filming on a phone where I was looking back at some of the clips and actually wondered, wait, did I shoot that sample clip on my Blackmagic or was this from the iPhone? Now I say most because there are still situations where you get a very obvious kind of, oh, this is a phone or a much lower end uh, point and shoot camera. And that's gonna be really low light situations. It still gets pretty noisy. And that's because you run into the hardware limitation of just a small sensor, smaller lens, and smaller overall form factor. And then you still have the dead giveaways, which is like the terrible lens flares that we've all been talking about the past couple weeks. And I'm not really sure why that's still a thing, but this isn't, ProRes isn't gonna fix the lens flare issue. Similar to cinematic mode, you kind of just need to play around with and figure out what situations work best uh, for this because whether it's low light situations or if you have to use sometimes the ultra wide or the telephoto lens There wasn't a huge difference between uh, ProRes and just the regular stock camera app shooting the regular Dolby Vision footage But the majority of the time it is totally worth it in my opinion again A lot of you may not care for any of this and that's totally fine or maybe you just want to shoot um, very specific situations in ProRes. I did notice in the Photos app, they did add a ProRes kind of pre-made album so you can easily find all your ProRes shot clips. Hey, so I need to interrupt myself. Pardon the mess, it is currently 3 a.m. the night before this video goes up. Actually feeling kind of sick after traveling, elevation level changes, jet lag, all that fun stuff. Coming back from Seattle, none of my gear is unpacked, so I'm recording in ProRes HQ on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, audio included. Uh, I just wanna add a couple more points since most of this A-roll was filmed a couple days ago when I first got access to ProRes. And now that I've had it for a couple extra days, there's a couple extra points I want to add into this video. Whew, storage. After just four or five days of taking a bunch of sample footage, yes, I recorded more than usual, including um, a lot of this talking head stuff. So in total, I'd say I have maybe about 45 minutes, an hour's worth of actual ProRes HQ footage. And currently my phone is about to hit 700 gigs of used up storage space. So, whoa. ProRes HQ is showing upwards of 600 megabits per second for bitrate, and that is crazy much more than I was honestly expecting. And so now I'm definitely understanding more so why Apple uh, chose to only give 1080p ProRes to anyone below 256 gig storage and anyone higher than that can have 4K because this is not gonna be something that even someone like me who loves to film at the highest level quality possible, I'm not gonna be able to do for just like filming everyday clips of my kids or something. This is gonna be for very specific use cases, like if I'm trying to um, combine clips for YouTube videos like this to match other cameras, or I need to stylize something a bit more, or color it a bit more. Anything where I can mentally be like, yes, ProRes is going to be useful in this 
uh, scenario. But the everyday stuff, I'm gonna stick to playing around with cinematic mode or just regular video mode. Also, when I recorded the last A-Roll um, was their super like beta build of this and they didn't make any UI changes yet. Now those changes have been in effect and when you see the update live for the app, it's going to show ProRes in the top left-hand corner when you're recording in that. And rather than kind of showing Filmic Extreme equals ProRes HQ, now it just says the various levels of ProRes so you can easily tell which level you're shooting at. And so they've cleaned up the UI to make it make more sense for a final build. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna to come to any surprise that this is gonna be for very specific use cases no one should use this for every single video on their phone. Because quite honestly, even if you're into like, oh, I'll just film and then dump things onto external hard drives, man, I'm having a heck of a time with that. Both the USB 2.0 speeds of lightning cables is pretty slow at best, and AirDrop, I haven't even been able to do that for any of this footage. As well, since I save everything to my Photos app, my iCloud Photos uploading, because I optimize my photos so that it doesn't take up all the space on my phone, it's currently trying to upload 450 of the latest clips and photos. So not only is it taking forever on ProRes, but it's also holding up my regular photos and everything to back up to iCloud as well. So all in all, yes, ProRes is awesome. It gives you so much more detail in the shots. And if you're shooting something that um, needs or you just want to have that greater level of detail, 10 out of 10 recommend. Uh, can't wait to see what Apple does in the future. Really hope Filmic can add their Log V3 to it. That would be an unstoppable mobile filmmaking force of an application. But yeah, it's not gonna be your everyday user or everyday use case for anybody. So really hope Apple goes USB Type-C next year, but time will tell. But like I said, this is still in beta. Huge thanks to the Filmic Pro team for letting me have the test flight of their uh, very beta build. And if you're seeing this video, then they should have released uh, their update by now to the public. So I'll leave a top link in the description to Filmic Pro if you don't already have it. And if you were curious, yes, this entire video was shot on the iPhone 13 Pro Max in ProRes HQ. And if you ask me, it looks pretty darn good. The audio is not straight from the iPhone because again, the city noise would have been absolutely terrible. So my black magic and the stereo mic is directly below it. That's the audio you're hearing, but all the visuals are straight from the iPhone. And uh, yeah, this scenario is definitely a good test for this stereo mic because it's pretty rough out here for audio wise. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Again, hopefully news comes out about when the ProRes update will come out from Apple's end and we'll see if there are any differences inside of the stock camera app than what Filmic uh, has been able to find access to essentially. But yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. See you in the next video.